sit in clay. What a wonderful surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. Considering my goons were meant to annihilate you eight minutes ago. It is once again time for Game of the Year, where the internet as a whole collectively argues about which game will walk away with the coveted Game of the Year title. The only problem, you haven't played any of them. Or maybe you did and you already forgot a bunch of stuff. Either way, I've got you covered. I'm Brian Altano, your guide to helping you power your way through your backlog so you can actually know what you're talking about when it comes to figuring out your personal game of the year. Today, we're prepping you with the knowledge you need to breeze your way through Insomniac Games' Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. This is IGN's Game Prep, presented by Truth. According to HowLongToBeat.com, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart takes roughly 11 hours to finish and about 18 hours total for completionists to 100% the game. So get comfy, because we've got a lot of ground to cover. So let's start off with everything you need to know before you start a new game. Who are you? Someone with a lot of questions. Look, feel free to ignore this one, but since this is a guide centered around beating a game as quickly as possible, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. Rift Apart does not lock any trophies or content behind difficulty, meaning theoretically, if one were so inclined, you could play through the game on easy mode and no one would ever know. Go ahead. I won't judge you. I promise. You think a crushing defeat is all it takes to stop me? I mean... Yes. Speaking of making things easier, Rift Apart features a number of puzzles throughout the game to break up all the explosions and carnage, but if you'd like to stick with the explosion and carnage, feel free to skip a puzzle by pausing the game and selecting that option. There are no penalties for doing so. Which rules? Fred got the lemonade! We're getting crazy tonight! Rift Apart also gives you the option to highlight enemies, collectibles, allies, and hazards in a particular color of your choosing. Now, you can turn the setting on inside the Visual and Contrast Options menu, and it should make finding collectibles much easier for all my completionists out there. You know who you are. It's super easy to toggle on and off, and it can help save you precious time during your playthrough. Are you, um, okay? No. I am broken, as is everything. Break everything with your wrench. You'll need to gather bolts to buy weapons, and you can find these by defeating enemies, smashing crates, and breaking pretty much everything else in the game, like fences, rocks, and machinery. But more on that later. Eureka! She's done it. Like all good platformers, Rift Apart is full of collectibles. There's gold bolts that unlock cosmetics and cheats, there's armor sets which are hidden across dimensional rifts all over each world, and they provide damage resistance to different enemy types, increase resource pickups, and of course make Ratchet and Rivet just look really, really cool. But last but not least, keep your eyes peeled for spy bots, which do two things. They brief you on the lore and backstory of each world you find them on, and are a vital component in unlocking a secret, powerful weapon that will make PlayStation fans, very happy campers. If you're looking for a complete guide on where you can find every gold bolt, armor piece, and spy bot, check out the link in the description below. In addition to unlocking cool cosmetics for Ratchet and Rivet, gold bolts also unlock cheats like infinite health and ammo with no repercussions whatsoever. That means your weapons will still earn experience points and trophies are still attainable. So since Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is a single player game, I say cheat a little. You earned it. Winning! No trophies or collectibles are permanently missable in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, but if you want to unlock the shifty character trophy, you'll want to hit every, or most, Blyzon crystals on Blyzar, and Cordelian during your first trips to the planet. Some of the crystals are easily missed, and having to double back later in the game is headache-inducing. <sighs> right. <laughs> Now, during your time in a Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, you'll dimension hop your way across time and space, and you can't afford any lag, mental or otherwise. So think through anything that could slow you down, like vaping nicotine. Don't make your life or Ratchets harder than it needs to be during this epic quest. Your reflexes and focus will need to be on point if you plan on taking down Nefarious and his goons across the nine planets available in the game. 
I understand the toll nicotine can take on your mental health. I used to get so frustrated repeating puzzles and encounters because I felt like I had trouble concentrating and making quick decisions. But thankfully, ever since I quit smoking, I feel like I can think more clearly and react faster in tricky situations like the ones you'll face in Rift Apart. By the way, quick thank you to Truth for powering this episode and for arming us with the info we need to keep our heads in the game. Learn more at thetruth.com. Be careful, Be careful out, out there. there. All right, well, let's get back to Ratchet and Clank because we've still got so much more work to do. Hey, look, an exit. Check this out. The Ratchet and Clank series is known for its over-the-top weaponry, and Rift Apart is no exception. Now, early on in the game, you shouldn't have any trouble buying any weapon available at Miss Zircon's shop until sometime in the mid-game point, at which point you'll need to make some careful choices. So here's some of our favorites. The Lightning Rod is an automatic weapon, perfect for crowd control thanks to its chain lightning effect and stunning larger enemies. Feeling overwhelmed by crowds? The Topiary Sprinkler is an automated turret that transforms foes into bushy hedges, immobilizing them and turning them into easy targets. A personal favorite of mine is the Ricochet, a weapon that fires a small projectile that hovers above an enemy and bonks them on the head with every press of the trigger. Perfect for large enemies and bosses, and just very funny. Now, these are just a few of the weapons to keep an eye out for during your time with Rift Apart. There are tons and tons to buy and upgrade, but you can't go wrong with these. Oh, who needs tradition? Let's spice things up. Rift Apart's weapons are a huge part of what makes the game unique. Now, each one has its own level bar that increases the more you use it and evolves into its ultimate form once it reaches level five. Much like in Pokemon, you'll want to spread out experiences across your whole arsenal rather than leveling one and feeling stuck when it runs out of ammo. Weapons can also be upgraded using Raritanium Crystals, letting you make your rocket launchers more explosive, your lightning rods more lightning-y, and your guns more shooty. You get the idea. Raritanium upgrades bring out the unique traits in each weapon, so you'll want to keep an eye out for hidden Raritanium boxes and check your map frequently to uncover nearby deposits that you may have missed. I am the all-seeing cosmic prophet of interdimensional sector 2255 phase omega, but you can call me Gary. Later in the game, you'll come across Zerky's Arena, the one-stop shop for putting your neck on the line to win all sorts of goodies. Over the course of the main story, you'll return here with new challenges to take on in the arena. Arena fights range from wave-based combat, remixed boss fights, weapon-specific challenges, speedo checkpoint races, you name it. Now, you can earn the Carbonox armor here, which increases how many bolts you pick up, as well as various gold bolts, spy bots, and even the box breaker item, which allows you to destroy crates from a distance with a ground pound. The arena is also a great place to reliably receive Raritanium, as you can always gain that as a reliable reward. Completing the twice as nice arena challenge rewards you with six raritanium, but that doesn't count the raritanium you get for killing each boss as well. Now, pair this with as many parts of Praetorium armor as you have unlocked, and you can earn more than 20 chunks of raritanium with each completion. Now, get to upgrading. Trudy and the Zerpstones may sound like the name of an intergalactic band, but it's also a vital side quest if you want to platinum the game, which you do because it's fun. On Sargasso, after removing the Seekerpede from the skies, you can help Trudy by gathering Zerpstones from the nearby area. This will reward you with the ability to shoot projectiles while flying with Trudy, as well as a spy bot, but really, Trudy deserves all the treats she wants. She's working just as hard as you. Just give her a treat. She deserves it. Oh, she's just hungry for Zerpstones. Later in the game, after first encountering a Kraken on Ardalus, you can swing shot towards a group of nearby pirates who are talking about keeping their treasure safe from others. Keep blasting through them and keep moving forward until you get to, well, whatever this is. Eventually, after fighting your way through the whole crew, you will be rewarded with the Mapomatic. This shows you the location of all Raritanium deposits, gold bolts, spy bots, and armor modules for every planet. Did it. With our tips and tricks, Nefarious and his goons won't stand a chance. With the galaxy once again at peace, you're now armed with the knowledge you need to argue for or against Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart during those heated Game of the Year discussions. Thanks again to Truth for sharing their own pro tips to keep us sharp and playing at peak performance. To learn more, including how to quit, head to thetruth.com. 
And for more on Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart and other Game of the Year hopefuls, stay tuned to IGN.com. Thanks for watching.